James Damore, the engineer who wrote a memo saying Google has no tolerance for ideological diversity, was fired by Google, thereby completely proving his point. But wait, this diversity memo must have been chock full of racism and misogyny, right? I mean, look at the reactions. What this employee said indicates discrimination and hostility. Google should fire him. Honestly, if no one is fired over this, Google should just admit their commitment to women is window dressing. I, for one, am okay living in a world where using pseudoscience to promulgate sexism against my co-workers is a fireable offence. If I weren't there, I would just walk to his desk and beat the shit out of him! Must have been pretty bad, right? What did he actually say? Men and women are biologically different, and have different skill sets suited to different tasks, a manifestly provable biological fact agreed upon by mainstream science that men tend to occupy more leadership positions because they are under more pressure to be status driven, that companies like Google discriminate against conservatives because of their political views, that Google has set up a politically correct monoculture in order to enforce an ideological echo chamber that shames dissenters into silence, and that people should be treated as individuals. And for that, James Damore was hunted down, identified identified, publicly shamed and dispensed with for his egregious thought crimes. The further a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. The left is at war with reality. Google is the ministry of truth. James Damore had the temerity to say 2 plus 2 equals 4. He had the nerve to refuse to participate in the two minutes of hate against conservatives. <laughs> And for that, he was unmasked, doxxed, witch-hunted, publicly shamed and fired, all within the space of three days. War is peace, freedom is slavery, diversity is uniformity. Google's reason for firing Damore was to suggest that he was encouraging an environment of harassment, intimidation, bias and unlawful discrimination. When that's exactly what Damore was trying to expose in his memo. That's exactly what the baying outrage mob did to Damore after he spoke out. Google CEO Sundar Pichai said the memo might have hurt some Google employees' feelings. <laughs> They too feel under threat and that's not okay. People must feel free to express dissent. Unless you're a white male conservative who expresses dissent, in which case you'll be summarily vilified and kicked out of the door within 48 hours. Yeah, that white male patriarchy that supposedly runs the show didn't help James Damore, did it? His white male privilege didn't do him any favours. And by the way, how safe would conservative employees feel expressing dissent, given that Google's new vice president of diversity, integrity and governance, Danielle Brown, literally worked for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Let's get this straight, this isn't just about one guy losing his job, this is about Google, the company that owns YouTube, making it crystal clear that it's hostile to ideological diversity. The company that has a near monopoly on search traffic. The most powerful corporation in the world in terms of controlling information. Just confirmed they have no interest in tolerating diversity of opinion. Let that sink in. If Google can't handle dissent inside, what makes you think they won't try to suppress it outside? Why do you think they've just empowered the ADL to police hate speech on YouTube? Now another Google insider has gone public to expose how Google is demoting anti-PC search results and anti-Islamic terror search results. They're hiding videos like this one from appearing in recommended videos on YouTube. This is stealth censorship. The rules have changed. It's not the state that's the primary threat to free speech, it's Silicon Valley. It's monolithic corporations staffed by people who think anyone to the right of Jane Fonda is literally Hitler. Airbnb is now banning people from using their service if they have the wrong political views. Oh, but if you're a Christian bakery that politely declines to make a gay wedding cake, the entire apparatus of government and the outrage mob will come crashing down on you. That's progressivism in 2017. Should we be surprised that the same people who for years demanded safe spaces in university, the supposed cradle of free speech and ideas being challenged, are now turning Google, Facebook, Twitter and the rest of them into ideological safe spaces where conservatives are banished. Professors are now even allowing students to change their own grades if their original grade hurt their feelings. What kind of society are we creating? One in which you won't even be able to get a decent job unless you parrot the progressive consensus. One in which ideological obedience and compliance is ruthlessly enforced by giant monolithic corporations that control reality. That is insidious. It's truly Orwellian.